Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll take you through the front pages of the national dailies as usual and bring you up to speed with what's making the rounds across board. And we'll have Femi Lawson join us this morning to analyze some of the big stories. I start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. And let's find out what's on the Daily Independent. Looking at the front page of the Daily Independent newspaper, federal government CBN consider under the table narrow devaluation. That's the bold caption on the Daily Independent. You've got several riders. Rise in Forex reserves, short-term FX market fix. You have analysts saying and say devaluation, a temporary solution. Naira needs to float. Serap asks court to stop Buhari's proposed 26 billion Naira on travels, meals, others. Uh, that's been put in the uh, proposed budget for 2022. And you also have another caption, Anambra Guba Paul, Saludo cruises to victory. And returning officer alleges signing result on the duress. That's also another caption you find on the front page of the Daily Independent. Federal government moves to curb rice importation through land borders. I mean, there's also some reports saying that, you know, rice probably would have arrived Thailand, you know, somewhere close by. And so uh, the president is planning to have meeting with, uh, you know, members of uh, some agencies to ensure that we don't have this importation. Nigeria's sea ports operating far above installed capacity, the NPAMD is quoted to say, and the vice president to represent Buhari at ECOWAS summit in Accra, that's in Ghana, that's what you find. Uh, this is some of the headlines we find on the Daily Independent newspaper. It's important that you pick up a copy and you read up all of the information. All right. And now to the Punch newspapers, Anambra governorship polls, Soludo sets to win. Leads in 17 local governments, APC alleges rigging. PDP and YPP win in one local government each. APC yet to win. We won't accept results. APGA rigged, claims APC. Also on the punch this morning, building collapse. Lagos records zero conviction as 213, uh, 213 die in seven years. Tribunal blames weak enforcement of regulations and corruption. Two more bodies recovered in Ikoi. Rescue efforts stop today. Oh, wow. Politicians jostling for 2023, eyeing uncertain future, says Adeboye. And Senate knocks CCT for ignoring corruption cases from CCB. Also this morning, federal government meets customs as 566,000 metric tons of India, Thailand, rice arrive, Benin Republic. Banks, insurance firms raking 22.6 billion naira from MDAs. Also on the punch, VC mounts defense as PDP carpets on door over varsity uh, fee hike. Salami report, Mago on half pay 16 months after suspension. And um, Uni Abuja kidnapped victims say we trekked for hours and were fed like slaves. A 43-year-old man arrested for beating daughter to death over persistent crying. Uh, and also says here Nigerians with missing vaccination cards need a fit of it and police report. Pantamese professorship Asu Panel Grills photo registrar recommends litigation. All right, uh, <clears throat> let's check out the leadership newspaper this morning away from the Punch newspaper. And the board caption says, INEC declares an Ambro governorship polling conclusive. That's on page four, and that's uh, what's making the rounds across the board. Uh, you also have to hold supplementary election in Hiala local government tomorrow. That's Tuesday. Abga candidate wins in 18 local government. Party Lords President Mohamed Buhari for non-interference. And you have a civil society organization advocate use of technology in future elections. <clears throat> you also have um, the Anambra governorship results on this other side of uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. And away from that, Kaduna begins crackdown on beggars and hawkers. That's on page six of the leadership newspaper this morning. And Asupana Claire's Futo OK's Pantami's alleviation, talking about the professorship. Uh, that's also what you find on the leadership newspaper. 
Uni Abuja kidnap victims recount ordeal. That's on page seven of the leadership newspaper. And you find Ijo Youth kick over plan to scrap NDDC. Aso Rock Electrical Installation repairs the GOB $5.2 billion in 2022. And you have Agri Ministry budgets 1.3 billion naira for provision of community boreholes. Uh, this is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper. It's important that you pick up a copy and read beyond the headlines. And now to the Guardian newspapers. Anambra Gubernatorial, Soludo leads. Uh, INEC concludes poll Tuesday. It says APGA wins 18 local government councils. Uh, PDP, YPP take one each. No election in Nihiala local government, says coalition officer. Um, I was tear gassed and locked in a toilet. Signed Orumba North Local Government Resort under gunpoint, says INEC official. APC six uh, cancellation of poll. How resilience and determination of electorate won Anambra polls. Also, situation room alleges vote buying and non payment of security personnel for election duty. Banks ditch costly estate investments for tech operations. And also bandits kill two of 66 abducted Kaduna Baptist worshippers in Jaw 3. Futo Asupano endorses Pantamese professorship. And also Niger Delta agitators give federal government 14 days to unveil and prosecute invaders of Odili's home. Uh, these are the uh, stories on the Guardian newspaper. We'll probably just start just before our guest joins us. We'll probably just start with uh, you know having these conversations and... Um, you know, of course, one of the last one that I took this one, the Niger Delta um, agitators given federal government 14 days to unveil and prosecute the invaders of Odili's home. It's still very mind-blowing that, um, you know, this is what, almost a week, more than a week since uh, that um, incident uh, happened. And the federal government, the Nigerian government is still claiming, the police, DSS, whoever, is still claiming that they do not know who invaded um, Justice Mary Odilis. It is, it is, <laughs> when a foreigner comes to Nigeria, you know, and Are you trying to attack me this morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, when a foreigner comes to Nigeria and complains, <laughs> it's not, he's not attacking the country. It's telling you exactly what But I feel seen. attacked at some point. <laughs> I mean, you cannot, we cannot be, you know, because of, you know, because we're trying to hide shame, mm. you know, now try to, you know, not fix what needs to be fixed. You know, and, and because we're embarrassed, I think it's here, because we're embarrassed at the fact that foreigners will come here and see these things and call us out, would then, you know, would be instead angry at the foreigner instead of angry at ourselves for living in a, in, a, in a country that these type of things happen. How do armed policemen, according to reports, enter the house or the home, storm the home of a Supreme Court judge in the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And the Nigerian government till date, this is a week, more than a week after that incident occurred, the Nigerian government till date still doesn't know who needs to, act, uh, be answered, uh, to be asked questions or who needs to be punished. I mean, make it make sense in any sane society that the government itself, you know, would claim that they do not know who, you know, was responsible for that. You, you know, that would actually, uh, it would actually mean that there's a, there's a way, you know, maybe the government is trying to insult the collective, That's exactly uh, our what it collective, is. And you intelligence, know, intelligence. We, any. At the end, <laughs> no, we do okay, have yes. all of that because at the end of the day, no police officer, no police officer would just wake up. That's number one. We do not live in a society where there's no government and law. We're not in an, a state of anarchy. Th that is why you have the law of social contract, of course. I mean, so we, we can't, you can't just wake up and say somebody wakes up. You know, police officers just all, all, of, all of a sudden summed up courage. You woke up without no order and instruction. Let's not forget that, the, you know, the um, security is still, you know, in the exclusive, you know, list. And it's not within the purview of, you know, the state government. And let's not forget the fact that constantly people are saying, you know, let's decentralize, you know, powers. Let's have the police uh, security issues to be handled by state government. And so no officer would actually just wake up because they are very zealous and then they just want to you know prove a point and just head straight there an instruction was given the the, the the move via instruction with instruction and someone gave the order 
So it is really, really shameful, very, very shameful to our democracy, and really bad that up until this point, we still have that kind of denial. If you look at all of the conditions surrounding how you know the police actually operate, you would understand that someone gave the order. Absolutely. So it's not, it, it, it doesn't really make any sense. We can't just wake up and say, oh, we don't know. I mean, the government is denying and everybody's denying. But you see, it brings us back to the fact that, you know, uh, sincerity of purpose, intention is also one of the major issues. And like you would say, if a foreigner comes into our country and begins to lash us, yeah. then we begin to feel very bad. But you see, what is the NBA doing at this point in time? What is the, what is the NBA doing? Some quarters are saying that the NBA should call for the resignation of the Attorney General of the Federation rather than all of these things. It is a very serious issue. And if we allow this order to continue to slide, then we constantly continue to you know, promote impunity and lawlessness. It's not the first one. Um, it wouldn't be the first one. I don't think it will be the last. Um, when you say if we allow this type of thing to slide, it's not, we, we've seen numerous you know, similar incidents uh, like this, where eventually there's no investigation and everyone just moves on. Eventually, as huge, as, an, as embarrassing, as much of a, of a national embarrassment it is, Nigerians just move on because the government itself has moved on and it's, it's no, it's, it has no interest in pursuing you know, any leads or even doing anything to punish anybody who was erring. Because they know, I believe that they know who exactly is responsible. The NBA, yes, has put out a statement, Illumidi Akpata put out a statement over, I think it was sometime last week. Um, and of course, it was some of the things that made headlines um, over the week also, you know, saying that Abubakar uh, Malami will be, you know, maybe lose his senior advocate of Nigeria, um, you know, title. Um, that's, you know, in, in, in one of the directions. But let's assume that these were not police officers. These were thugs that had a tailor amongst them that sold uh, police uh, uniforms for them. They are the person who supplied them weapons. So it would mean that till now, we still haven't been able to identify these thugs. We still haven't been able to arrest anybody or, any, or, or find out who exactly was responsible for that one week later. A Supreme Court judge in Nigeria, if you remember, that this is very similar to... Well, it's not very similar, actually. That one, uh, the Bola Ege is what I was going to mention. But if you want to assume that these weren't, um, you know, men of the Nigerian police force, so, and they were criminals, that's exactly how late, late Chief Justice of Federation uh, Chief Bola Ege died. And that's how he was killed back then, you know, by Old Chico Basinger's government. Till date, in 2021, there's still no answers. There's still nobody who has been, you know, found guilty for the murder of Bola Ege. So let's, I'm, I'm just creating that scenario that maybe they are not actually police officers. But we know no. that these weren't thugs, these weren't, you know, you know armed men dressing. I, I, and now also to, to also add to that, I don't call, I don't control the police uh, architecture, but, you know, I don't give instructions. You don't. I don't know, maybe you do. And it's not, you know, a common Nigerian. So we need to understand that the IGB cannot be acting and saying, oh, he's not in the know. The federal government cannot say, we do not know. It's high time that, you know, we begin to be act enough reason in, in, in another country it should be enough reason for you to step down since you have no idea what is going on with your own police so so you just you just wake up and have a zealous yeah. man uh, just wake up and then they begin Abs to act in a, you know, a certain it's, way it, it, it normally should be enough reason for to point out that you have no control over the people that you are in charge of and you maybe should go home and retire in a sane society um but we obviously do not live in such a sane society and so we will move on as a country we will move on and we'll continue living our lives. We have actually lives. moved on. Um, it says in the, um, in the, it was, it, yeah, the one that shocked me actually. It says building collapse, Lagos records zero convictions as 213 die in seven years with re, in building collapse across Lagos. Um, it says also tribunal blames weak enforcement of regulations, corruption. It says two more bodies recovered in Ikoi and the last one, rescue efforts stop today. And that is the one that I still cannot wrap my head around. Um, the reason that 213 people have died in building collapses in Lagos and there's still no conviction is because, and this is on the Punch newspapers, is simply because there is no punishment for incompetence. There is no punishment, there is no respect for the laws, and there is no implementation of whatever the law says with regards um, the value of the Nigerian life. And that's what I spoke about on Friday. The value of the Nigerian life, that no country, no sane society loses 213 people to building collapses and still has not been able to find one person responsible for any of this. In any level of, this, of the failure, if it is whoever signed off on the 21-story building or didn't sign off and allow the building to continue, if it is those people who sold fake building materials, if it is those who you know, did a, a soil test 
and send fake results. You know, if it is those who started the structure or didn't listen to the structural, structural engineer that gave warnings, somebody, there has to be somebody that is held responsible in a, in a sane society. And uh, when you hold, hold that person responsible, it makes every other person to sit up because they know that when one life is lost, somebody will be held responsible at any level or maybe at all levels. And this is yet another opportunity for the Lagos State Government to ensure that they do not let incompetence, um, you know, to, to be the order of the day. Rescue efforts, as, and, and aside the failure of the whoever it is that signed off on 15 or 8 or 21 or, or 40 story buildings, when we move away from those aspects and, and move away from, you know, the, the, whoever it is that broke the law, that went on building when he should or he should have stopped building, then let's go to when it was time to, for people to be rescued. Ikoyi has its, its, its under a local government. There should be an office that is responsible for, for, for emergencies in, the, in, in, in that area of Lagos, in Etios at least. Tell me why. They had to wait. And remember when we spoke to uh, um, um, Lasema DG, he said they were waiting for equipment to come from Mushi. Like what concerns Mushi equipment with what's going on in Ikoyi, we still have not been able to answer that question. It's that level of incompetence with rescue that makes you get there and say that your lie detecting machine is not working because they didn't charge it you know, before they got there. It's that level of incompetence that makes us realize that this is what, what when did this happen? Last week, Monday? Mm -hmm. One week later, we have suddenly decla declared that, um, uh, that we, uh, we are ending rescue efforts today. One week later, there will be no questions asked as to whether the Lasema and Nema itself, who was meant to be you know, at the forefront of rescuing these people, whether they actually went through standard operating procedure for rescue operations in Nigeria. There will be no questions asked. There will be no questions asked as to whether it is excavators that are meant to be used to demolish a building, they are meant to use so, for rescue. You know, effort. because when I saw those excavators, they look, really look very scary and very sad. Because, I mean, looking <laughs> at it, when you have the excavator going through, it feels like it's it's going to, it could pick on someone's head. It could even kill the person who is still even living. Once again. Right? So it was, it's really, really scary. Once again, now, there, will be, there will be no questions asked. And that is the most painful part, that there will be no questions asked at that level of incompetence that you can see spread across every single detail of this disaster. So it becomes very tiring for me because uh, it feels like it is not, it doesn't feel like it is that we are going in circles so we keep going in circles we're talking about the same thing over and over again whether it's the elections whether it's the fact that you know um Odile's house was actually invaded and up until now nobody has been arrested up until now government is saying we don't yeah. know who who actually invaded the house we let, didn't give let, you know let's, let's any in, sort um, of um you know instruction guest. uh we have uh, mr ezekiel i talk uh, who's joined us good morning thanks for joining us sir Mr. Ayato, can you hear us? Good morning. Um, I think your device is still muted. You may need to unmute your device uh, so we can hear you clearly. Um, but but these, are, these are, you know, um, conversations that are extremely important. Um, if, we, if we plan moving forward as a country, if we plan reducing the number of people that are, you know, living in Nigeria, uh, because they've realized that the Nigerian government and the Nigerian system is not, you know... No, no, you see, the, pr the problem with... Okay, over time, this is my opinion. I don't think that Nigerians are lawless people, okay? We just seem to... Because Nigerians outside of Nigeria are very law-abiding. And you ask yourself, why? Now, there's a system that works. If you talk about laws and implementation of those laws, we seem to have too many laws. And like one of our guests had mentioned, you know, in the course of uh, the show as at last week, when we were talking about regulations and codes and what have you, I, like he said, he said, we're over-regulated. We have too many laws. But with these laws, laws without implementation would just be, you know, mere musical yeah. instrument. And they're just nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. Because if we have these laws and we're not implementing, people are not arrested. How many arrests have we made? People who, we, we continue to encourage and, you know, encourage impunity we continue to encourage lawlessness and because nobody's punished for doing a thing and somebody 
is emboldened somewhere, you know, to act in that same way. And they're like, nothing is going to happen. Nothing happened to Mr. B, nothing happened to Mr. C, and that's why it's going to happen. Like I mentioned earlier on, you know, prior to this time, I said, what's on the street? The people already. I mean, I'm on the street, and I hear people say, oh, well, it's nothing. It's, it's just the big boys. If you notice, the big boys are involved in this issue, and it's just going to be another issue of the big boys. They will sort it out, and nothing will really happen. And to find out that, you know, a lot of persons have lost their lives, whether it's one, whether it's two, even if it's somebody's leg that got broken in the course, it, 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 it is a human being. And we should be is. valid. You know, it is important. But um, like I would always say, it is quite tiring and very, very depressing that we have to talk about these issues over and over again because it is the same problem that is trickling, you know, the same problem that we keep seeing in different aspects, you know, of the economy. Then and I up know, until we, that, you know, up until we make up our minds, you know, to be very sincere yeah. and begin to act, the government needs to do it. You know, because there has to be a political will. Now, with all of this that's going on, who is going to enforce it? Government is responsible for enforcing. So uh, should we go and enforce the law? No, we're not. That's not our responsibility. And so we will continue like this until we have a system that is, you know, functional, until we have people in the system that have the political will to do the right thing. And doing the right thing is not about talking. In the Bible, those who believe the Bible will say, faith without works is dead. And so it's like saying you believe and you're not doing. You can read the Bible and don't practice what the Bible says or, you know, read the Quran and don't practice what the Quran says. It doesn't make any sense. Sadly, you can't get those people in those positions if we don't have a better electoral system. And so... You know, it feels like, you know, every time that you try to answer the questions that you're asking, there's always some roadblock. There's always something that, that makes, it, makes it even And how more, do we have a, a better electoral system? Who are the persons who control the electoral system? The same system? people that you want okay. to... <laughs> <laughs> it's painful. I mean, it's really, really painful, you know. And I've seen people say, oh, that the legacy government should be sued. The Foscorp, you know, prop, um, you know, property, you know, developing company or whatever should be sued by these families. And you, you can't knock them for saying that, you know, because it is somebody's incompetence, it's somebody's failure that led to the loss of these lives. You know, we're talking about 40 people that died on Monday now in, in, this, in this disaster. It is someone's failure and incompetence that led to, you know, their, their deaths. And you cannot ignore um, those failures and you can't ignore that level of incompetence and just keep on, keep on moving and act like those lives don't matter. Mr. Yantok, good morning once again. Ezekiel Yantok, can you hear us uh, this morning? Yeah, no, I can hear you. I can hear you now. Okay, now we can hear you too. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Nice to be with you. All right, so, so I, I, I would like that you probably start with the conversation on... Um, um, the building collapse. Um, it says on the punch there, Lagos records uh, zero convictions as 213 die in seven years. It also goes on to say two more bodies recovered in Ikoi and rescue efforts to stop today. Uh, let's, let's bring you in first on that one. Yeah the, very yeah, the very first thing is that we run a country where we really understand what government is all about. We run a country where those in government think that we elect them to take care of themselves and their cronies and the things that are important to them. We run a country where we don't understand that the law is faceless and that we need to have a sane society where people must fear and respect the law. As in this country today, any man that can afford to build a 21-story building, any man that can have can afford to build a structure that can kill up to 30, 40 people at a go, must be a big man of some sort. And those people seem to be untouchable. And I think it is sad, absolutely so. I think the earlier we realize that government is faceless and to serve the larger interests of the generality of the people, and that anybody okay. that is given the Mr. privilege Yaito. of serving... Yes. Can, can you turn on your video? Um... It seems to be turned off. Oh, I see. I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that. Okay. But go, go ahead. Go ahead as you, as you sort that out. Yes. So I was saying that if we it's run fine. a system when we... We're, I don't know if my video is on now. It should yes, be. it is. Go ahead. Yes. If we run a system when we realize that government is a sacred institution that is faceless and provides the larger good for everybody and that the law is also faceless where who, no matter whose ox is God, you do the crime, you do the time. 
once we do that, then we start to realize that the big man has to comply and cannot get away with blue murder. The only reason why we have people who, who that so many people have been killed over this short period of time and not one person has been convicted is because all these properties are owned by untouchables. And the earlier we eliminate that concept of untouchability from our you know, governance lexicon, the earlier, the better it will be for all of us. I think it's sad that people will do the wrong thing and they couldn't be bothered because they know they will get away with it. And I think the time has come for us as citizens, all of us, to wake up and say no to this. The moment that we start to hold government accountable by coming out to interrogate our recruitment processes, to that extent, will we be able to have a country that is sane? For now, I think it's very, very sad what's happening. All right. Um, I think with the time we have, we can, you can also get your uh, views on the um, Anambra elections that have been uh, declared okay. inconclusive. There will be supplementary elections on Tuesday. Yes. It says there were no elections in the whole of Ihiala local government area. Go ahead, please. Yeah, there certain technicalities about election that we must understand. And the technicality is that the moment that the results you have, even if one man has won so much, and the result that we don't have kind of means that it can assume that one person wins the whole vote. If one person wins as, as I mean, as inconceivable as it is, but INEC must work within the parameters of the law. So though Solula or Abga has seemingly taken it, because of their volume of votes in Iheala, they have to unnecessarily do that um, I'll just call it, it's like going through the motion. That is the, the first thing Nigerians should understand, and they should please be, be, um, be patient with INEC. Secondly, I think that there's something that is starting to happen. This question of, um, you know, decentralizing, um, you know, the, the governance structure, which people are restructuring, people are starting to think about it. Because the only reason why even PDP will not make you know, such impact in Anambra State is the fact that the Anambrarians are starting to say, let's hold on to our own. This concept of taking us to the center is an evil wind that does no man no good. Let us hold on to what we have. Hold our people responsible because this center is filled with leeches who just come to take and go away. I think there's a mindset reset that is happening in Anambra State. And that is going to largely affect, you know, the goings on. People are going to start to ask, can we take something and hold our own instead of all this center, center, belonging to the center that has benefited no man, instead of all, all the center always coming in to pick what we have in our state. Uh, and thirdly, I think that everybody should learn the lesson that if you do not go out to vote, Whatever is the vote that is declared, that person is going to win, even if it is by less than 10% of the you know, projected voter um, you know, uh, uh, population. And to that extent, I think that the Southeastern Easterners have shot themselves in the foot. And it's just about managing a bad situation, so to speak. And for what INEC has done, I listened to them very well. The logistics, people who were afraid and refused to give out, you know, the, my, their, their vehicles, and even the people that were trained on the day that were not able to come out on that day and they had to do very quick. I think that INEC should be commended because they found themselves between the rock and the hard place. And for what they've done so far, I think it's a lesson for all of us to look at it and decide that going forward, we must be careful to ensure that we participate fully and avoid distractions in coming elections okay let's quickly share your thoughts on another uh, headline on the daily independent newspaper it says the federal government cbn consider on the table naira devaluation mm -hmm. and uh, you have some experts saying that the, you know devaluation of the naira is a temporary solution uh, what are your thoughts um again i i bring it back to i always look at the big picture Governance is not a quick fix mechanism. It is not. The reason is that any genuine investor looks at your thinking process. And they're like, if I bring my money into this country, 
How am I assured of their monetary policy? So when we do all these quick fix on the table kind of moves, we are inadvertently hurting the country. We need to sit down, get a pool of you know very sound economists, and look at the way to future. Sometimes you may need to take a very hard decision just to make sure that you have investor confidence and a long run, you know, uh, better for it uh, approach. I think that makes more sense. But we have the central bank a lot of times getting involved in politics and they really should be should be, should be saved from all these political considerations so that they give us monetary policies that investors will look at and have confidence that issue that animation of confidence in investors is extremely important in governance and for you to have a system that is secure a system that that is that people can come in and put their money in it and you need investors in every system for you to be able to have an economy that is buoyant. And I, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with the way that the central bank deals with monetary policies. All right. Um, Ezekiel Yanitok, thank you so much. Uh, sadly, we have to wrap up here. Um, thanks for your time this morning. And uh, we wish you a very beautiful you. and interesting week ahead. Thank you. Thanks for having All the best. Cheers, guys. Absolutely. All right, uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, a little bit of history, and then we'll, uh, of course, uh, be moving to our first major conversation for today, which is uh, the Anambra elections, uh, exactly what, it, uh, what happened you know, over the weekend. We'll talk about it when we come back.